We are going to look at an application of homogeneous systems of equations called Leon Tief input output analysis. A little bit of history on this topic. Leon Tief was an economist who wrote a paper in 1951 where he described this way to analyze an economy, and later on in 1972, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics for this work. The example we will look at today begins as follows Suppose that an economy consists of coal, electric, and steel sectors, and the output for each sector is distributed among the various sectors as shown in the table below, where the entries in a column represent the fractional parts of a sector's total output. The basic idea here is that each one of these sectors is dependent upon the other sectors, and so when we look at the table, we can see that the distribution of output is divided up into, where the, into the columns of the table, where the rows of the table represent what is needed by each one of the sectors. The third column of the table says that the total output for the steel sector is divided as follows. 60% of it is going to coal, 20% of it is going to electricity, and 20% of it remains in the steel sector. The idea is that the steel sector will need coal in order to produce steel, it will need electricity in order to produce steel, and it will need steel in order to produce steel. You can see that the columns of this table add up to one. That's because that's 100% of the output from that sector. Uh, this can also be shown in a diagram where we can see uh, where the output from each one of the sectors is going to go. So when I look at the electricity sector here, I can see that 10% of the electricity sector is staying back in the electricity sector, while 40% of it is moving to coal and 50% of it is moving to steel. If you look at this diagram, you will see that all of the arrows pointing out of each particular sector will have to add up to one. I have 10% going out of electricity to electricity, 40% going out of electricity to coal, and 50% going out of electricity to steel. So the arrows going out of a sector have to add up to one. The arrows going into a sector do not necessarily need to add up to one. For example, the third row of the table says that steel needs 40% of, of coal's output, 50% of the electric output, and 20% of the steel output. If we let P sub C P sub E and P sub S represent the total output of each sector, then steel is going to need 0.4 P sub C of coal, it's going to need 0.5 P sub E of electricity, and 0.2 P sub S of steel. We can now say that in order for steel to produce enough to meet the needs of all of the other sectors, the P sub S is the amount of steel that is produced, that's th that amount is going to have to equal the amount of steel or the, the amount that is needed by these other sectors. Similarly, I can say that the amount that coal produces will need to be 40% of what electricity produces and 60% of what steel produces. Electricity will need to be 60% of what coal produces, 10% of what electricity produces, and 20% of what steel produces. And then, as we decided, the, the equation for steel. You will notice that the right side of these equations match exactly the coefficients that we find in this table. Now, we have a system of equations. You will recognize that this does not fit into our standard form of a system of equations because we have variables on both the left side and the right side. In order to have a standard form, we want everything to be on the same side. So if I do a little bit of algebra to this system of equations, I can rewrite it like this, which was just me subtracting the left side um, from the right side and you'll see that this has now become a homogeneous system of equations. We know how to solve a homogeneous system of equations. I took the system of equations and put it into a matrix. That this is an augmented matrix, and I'm going to take that and put it into reduced row echelon form, which comes out looking like this. And then uh, these are the fractions, negative 31 over 33 and negative 28 over 33. Probably best to round those to decimals. So in a decimal representation, the 31 over 33 is approximately 94%. And then we have the negative uh, 85%. I can write this 
as a, uh, uh, in terms of the variables, I can write the solution, which I will get that the P sub S is a free variable and P sub E is therefore 0.85 P sub S and P sub C is 0.94 P sub S. This allows us to draw the conclusion that the equilibrium production level is that coal must produce 94% of what steel produces and electricity must produce 85% of what steel produces. So the basic idea here is that we want each sector of the economy to produce enough to satisfy all of the other sectors of the economy. When Leon Tief originally wrote his paper, he had divided an economy in, up into 500 sectors. You can see that 500 sectors would be a lot more complicated, but it really wouldn't be much more difficult because we would just have an incredibly large matrix, which we could still reduce and then find these equilibrium production levels in a similar way.